No, you like that one. I like it. That's why I put it Okay, now, we believe that the Bible is truth. But if it's not fact, then by definition, it can't be true. If the Christian faith, as laid out for us in the Bible, is not true, then I don't want to be a Christian. If Jesus didn't die on a cross, forgiving or loving his enemies, then it's not a nice story to encourage people to be nice. It's a wicked lie. If Jesus didn't come back on the third day, as the Bible claims, then it, it's not a good story to tell the kids. It's building your life and worldview on sand. I want to build my life upon the rock. And I believe Jesus to be that rock. And I believe the Bible to be gospel truth. But each of you need to think about why you believe that, if you do. And if you don't, then you also have to ask yourself why not, or you're being equally dishonest. Quick aside, when I ask people who don't follow Christ for their rationale, very often it's nothing more sophisticated than because so many Christians are hypocrites. How utterly pathetic. If I were to reject Islam because of what was allowed to happen on the 11th of September 2001, that would make me a small-minded bigot. I have chosen to reject Islam, not based on the number of terrorists that worldview propagates, but based on the historical record of the Quran and Hadith. I reject Muhammad as a prophet because he does not fulfill the criteria for a prophet. And nor does his life reflect what my heart tells me is moral. I reject the Quran because it contradicts external and more reliable historical sources. When assessing whether or not to be a Christian, you should look at the example of Jesus Christ, at the source documents, not at the uh, traditional Catholic background of Adolf Hitler, or my imperfect lifestyle, or even the fine moral, moral and spiritual example of Robin Baker himself. <laughs> the Bible doesn't ask me to follow me, and I would be horrified to hear any Christian say, believe this because I believe it. We should be, believe the Bible for one reason, one reason alone, because it is true.
These, these criteria for assessing historicity are, firstly, internal consistency. Does it contradict itself? Literary style. Does it claim to be true? Archaeology. Is it talking about real events in real places with real people? And textual criticism. Those of us who know are familiar with Alpha are familiar with this particular uh, science. How do we know that what we have is really what the eyewitnesses wrote down? If a text answers all of these criteria, then I will give it credence. So, are the Gospels in that category? I'll take each point in turn and apply them to the Gospels. And then we can see whether this book is something we can logically put our faith in. First point, internal consistencies. A narrative must be consistent. If it says Harry Potter is a hero and a good boy, and then goes on to portray Harry lying, cheating, stealing, disrespecting his eight elders, being involved in satanic practices, and trying to kill people, then that is inconsistent and should be regarded as nonsense. I once heard the preacher at my old church tell this story. He had picked up a hitchhiker. The young man sat in his car, listening to the, the, the preacher's worship music, and said, Why, I don't know, I'll have a couple of chairs for this.
Thus, Matthew, Mark and Luke, the three synoptics, corroborate each other. And when you come across things that are hard to understand, don't jump up and down and throw the whole book away. But dig a little and reach a rational conclusion. The conclusion that I have reached is that the Gospels are entirely consistent. You must find your own position from actually reading what they say. Uh, literary style. In the introduction to Charles Darwin, Origin of Species, he writes, I am well aware that scarcely a single point is discussed in this volume on which facts cannot be adduced, often apparently leading to the conclusion directly opposite to those at which I have arrived. What? He's basically saying it's a load of rubbish. It, 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 it's a working theory if we're, if we're going to be nice about it, but frankly, he, he doesn't claim this to be fact. Because it isn't. The Da Vinci Code, similarly, Who said boo? Me. Yeah, bother. Um, <laughs> Similarly states itself to be a novel, not an exhaustive work of great historical research, and includes a very, very short list of facts at the start of the book before it begins to weave a story based on the imagination of the author and the fantasists he stole it from. The Quran, in contrast, there it is, claims itself to be true revelation from Allah. The Bible, therefore, should never be compared to Darwin, Dan Brown, or Harry Potter, but it can be held up next to the Quran as similar literature, uh, and compared to it just as to the Book of Mormon. Though not to the Vedas and Upanishads of Hinduism and Buddhism, which never claim to be based on the other the Bible claims not only to be real, but the exclusive truth. It is not, as I was told, fairy stories, despite the inclusion of miracles. That would only make it that would only make it a fairy story if the miracles didn't happen. How many people in this room have witnessed miracles happen today? Um, by the way, there was a sharp intake of breath when I said that, uh, that, that that's two hands up from Phil. Cool. And possibly a Mexican wave starting. Um, when there was a sharp intake of breath when I said that the Bible could be compared to the Quran. Um, I, I suggest to you that the Quran would be found to be false when compared to the Bible. Um, but it, it's in the same category of literature, that's what I was saying. Um, before anyone goes away and says I'm um, preaching heresy. Um, <laughs> Third point, archaeology. The third measure of historicity is, an, is archaeological. Does this book talk about the land of Narnia? Or a magical world reached through King's Cross Station? No. It talks about Jerusalem. Which still exists. It talks about Egypt about Babylon, and about Jericho, which is about there, I think. Is that all right? Close enough? Okay. It talks about real places. Places which archaeology has proven existed and were important at the time. This is where it falls down in the Book of Mormon, by the way, which talks about, well, fictional places. Does it talk about mythical heroes? Like Achilles and Hector. No. Talks about Pontius Pilate, who we have historical records of. There we go. You see that, that, that bit there in the middle? There? That's actually an engraving about Pontius Pilate. We know he existed, we know he was around at the time. We have actual records of. It talks about King Uzziah, who we have records of. Well, does, does it then talk about airy fairy timing? A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Oh, I'm not going to sing Star Wars. Uh, no, it gives consistent dates, albeit not actual dates. It gives consistent timing. Um, the year King Uzziah died, as Alan shared for us, 
Well, there it is. There's Isaiah who wrote it. There's Ahaziah, which is an alternative spelling of, of Uzziah. And then we've got the place. What, what did you say? Seven, around 740. 740. 740 BC. We've got dates. We've got actual timing. We're talking about, we're talking about real, real times here. Okay. We can see I think, other things that were happening in parallel time. I like this laser thing, by the way. Can I take it? It's mine. Yeah. He, he's nodding. I think he's going to rush to the ground laser. Okay. Um, the year King of Zion dies once more the time, but other things are recorded in the Gospels which allow us to get a handle on timing. I threw this one in as well. That's a, a, an engraving. You can't read it, but one of those words means King of Zion. We, we, again, we have archaeological evidence that these things are real. This is not written in a fictional timeline, but within one which can be put alongside the archaeology he has discovered. Why is this? Will told us in two minutes um, <laughs> about the reason that Luke wrote his orderly account of these things. If you notice the material, which is only found in Luke and not in the others, you can get an idea of how he gathered the information. It clearly talked to Mary, Jesus' mummy, and many of the disciples, and people surrounding Jesus. His was a well-researched historical account, indeed, he is regarded by modern historians to be one of the finest recordings of this era, based in his gospel and also the sequel, Acts. Archaeology may not be able to produce cast iron proof of the Bible's truth. Can't. It's not, it's not possible. It's not that same. It's not that sort of information. But it has yet to produce anything that flies in the face of the historical record. 